custody by police raids in East London in connection to last night's attacks. Here to weigh in are counter-terror experts, national security analyst for the Clarion Project, Ryan Morrow, and former senior military intel officer on the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force, Steve Rogers. Nice to see both of you this morning. Thank you. Thank Ryan, you. we talk about trying to dismantle this network, both internationally and here at home. How do we do it in order to stop these guys? Well, there's many different ways that we can do it. Uh, one recommendation I would have is look at where these groups come from. Very often they'll come from the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the largest Islamist movement around the world. They can legally operate in the United States. If they were designated as a terrorist organization, and they should be because Hamas is part of the Muslim Brotherhood, then they wouldn't be allowed to legally operate in the U.S. And the ones that are could be raided and investigated, maybe be shut down. And that's something that people can, can actually call their congressmen and request a sign onto legislation to make happen. And one of the points you made earlier, which is a really interesting point, is the idea that the mosque in the Manchester bombing had ratted on uh, the bomber, had told authorities about it. That's what they said. Turns mm -hmm. out what? Right. Well, I wrote an article uh, for Clarion Project about the different ways that Islamists spin events like this. And what the so-called moderate mosque that the Manchester bomber came from did was they said, well, we knew about his extremism. The story went out that he had confronted the imam because the imam condemned terrorism. Uh, but then the media started reporting from sources within the mosque saying, oh, well, they actually re reported him to the authorities. Then the truth came out. No, those sources were lying and the mosque did not. Hmm. So relying on that is not going to work. Steve, president tweeted about notice we're not having a gun debate right now because these individuals use knives, but we are having a gun debate. It took eight minutes for this to unfold. You believe in that eight minutes, a lot could have been prevented if those officers were able to arm themselves. That's exactly right. President Trump from day one has, talk, has been talking about being strong, being tough, and stop being politically correct. Now, it took eight minutes, and the police did a great job there for them to get to the scene. But in the United States of America, we have something called the Second Amendment. And I believe that that amendment makes it very clear that people have the right to bear arms. And there now is the time to move on these legislative bills that would give people in this country the right to carry control concealed weapons. And we're not talking about the Wild West here. We're talking about citizens in this country who would be trained. And think about that. If there was even the police officer in England armed, uh, there would have been a lot less uh, carnage. He's facing some backlash, as you can imagine, this morning for his tweet last night about the travel ban. The White House hadn't called it a travel ban, and they were pushing back on that, calling it that. But the president last night, even in capital letters, called it, we need to get the courts to sign on to this travel ban here in the United States to make us safer. How do you see it? What is the president's motive? To protect the American people. So, yes, indeed, we should have a travel ban until anyone coming in this country is vetted. My goodness, every time the president says something, you've got the liberal progressives pounding him. Well, he said he'd, make a, he'd, he'd protect the American people. That's his responsibility, and he's doing the best he could. Ryan, you said this is a sell. Obviously, right. if they wrapped up 12 people, right, in these raids that we're seeing this morning here live, looks here in London as they've arrested 12 people overnight in connection with the three that were already shot and killed. You point out that a cell is always part of a network. Right. Where, where do we go from here? Who are they looking for, you know, the tentacles of this? It's like, a, you know, an octopus. Do we know anything about whether or not these guys were on a watch list and what would they be looking for? Based on history, I would make the assumption that the perpetrators were probably on a watch list, that there had some intelligence, especially because the authorities reacted so quickly after identifying them to go and arrest another 12 people. So it was a cell carrying out the attack, apparently part of a network because they just arrested a lot of people. But then those networks are part of a larger enemy infrastructure. And that's where we need to focus. The tentacles are coming into the UK and into the West. It's like we're being invaded and we're focusing on the invading army, but not the country that's dispatching them. How do we stop these tentacles from coming into the United States? Well, I think it's very important right now that we stand united. We have a leader, we have a president who wants to bring this country together, and all this fighting, all of this division being caused by, whether it be Democrats or liberals, is giving our enemies the opportunity, the opportunity, I tell you, to do the damage they want to do. Steve Rogers, Ryan Morrow, great to see both of you this morning. Thanks Thank so much. You.